recording. So it's so great to have you with me, Buck. I am really happy to be speaking with you. I've actually, um, I don't know if you know this, but I've actually seen a, a bunch of your interviews throughout several years. So you, you've come on Thank my you. radar a little while ago. Um, so I've become aware of you. And um, I've always thought that you made a lot of sense, a lot of common sense, and I think it's so important. <laughs> and I think it's I'm, so I'm calling my mom right now to tell her. <laughs> yeah, let her know. Let her know. <laughs> Does she? Do, do do people usually not say that? <laughs> well, you know, you know where my real background comes from. People just think I'm kind of stupid. So yeah, no, not that. I'm just kidding. My parents are awesome. I have cool parents. That that's that seems like a very important thing. So yes, yes, yeah. I should call my parents and let them know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm very lucky. My parents really, as much as I was abusive as a youngster going through a lot of stuff, today I have the most amazing relationship with my parents. They're super awesome. That is that is really great to hear. Yeah. So I think um, one reason that I wanted to talk to you, you know, aside from the fact that I think you're immensely reasonable and a great <laughs> <laughs> great speaker um is that i think you know there's a tendency to sort of hear about um you know this particular subject from that we're going to discuss from very kind of extreme voices mm -hmm. and i think it leaves people feeling frustrated confused angry um, kind of misunderstanding of the subject matter. And, and I think it drives people further to their sort of extremes. And so I wanted to have a chance to give people sort of an understanding and discuss some of these issues from, from a different point of view, from a point of view that's a little bit less you know, I think it's extreme, <laughs> shall we say. Yeah. <laughs> so I think a good starting point would be maybe to, well, one thing is um, I would love to just know a little bit of your background because you sort of okay. came of age at a different time period. Um, and and you also call yourself um, a transsexual as opposed to trans. So I think that's yes. a pretty specific distinction. Yes. And so I'd love to know a little bit more about that and also just a brief uh, guide through your journey. Thank you. You're awesome. First off, thanks so much for reaching out to me. It, it does mean a lot that you saw me and you see what I'm doing and I'm, it's not easy, but you know, with people like you and uh, people seeing me, I, I feel that the work that I'm doing is so important important on some level and it's you know I take breaks <laughs> I take big breaks <laughs> but but that being said you know I'm 60 years old and I transitioned 30 years ago so you know pretty much yeah. half my life I lived in the female space and now half my life I lived in more of a male space and I don't deny my biology I'm not one of those people I'm very much understand that I'm a biological female it's the reason I transitioned so <laughs> anyone who's denying their biology who says they're trans and they're not really trans because you can't be trans without biology biology attached to it. So, you know, I'm that guy. I, you know, I, I started my career actually in the pornography business, which makes people a little bit upset. But that being said, you know, I used my pornography in a means in a way as activism back in the day and more that I wanted to show diversity in bodies and all of that kind of stuff. But today I sort of moved out of that space and became more, I, and I don't like to use the word activist because I'm not an activist. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a guy who on some level feels that I need to speak up because what I see today is not a representation of myself or many of the other people in my community. And why I use the word transsexual is because back in the day we called sex change, what we know we can't change our sex, but we called that because the whole point was to look like a man, right? Or, or a woman. So for me, the whole point was to look how I look today and to really achieve that for me is huge. And for me, for, for people to see me as a man is huge for me. It, it, it got rid of my dysphoria. It makes me be able to be, you know, a functioning human in the world. And, you know, on some level coexist with you. I, I don't want to take anybody's space. I want to be a part of the world. If that may, you know what I mean? I don't, yeah. I want to be hanging out with you and <laughs> doing all kinds of cool stuff. I want to be and... hanging out with you too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be that tranny over there. You know what I mean? Like the, the diverse, the, 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 this idea of diversity inclusion coming from 
the trans community is a complete lie. And um, what's ever happening over there, I will just say to you, is not a reflection of myself or many of, of us who don't have the opportunity to speak out. So with that, I'm, I have the opportunity to speak out because I, I can't lose anything. I, I'm not in that space to, to lose anything, if that makes sense. I can still pay my rent. I can still eat. I can still do all the things I need to do because I don't rely on that particular community for, for my own self, if that makes sense. Right. And you transitioned when you were 30 yeah. um, at, and at a very different time. But yeah. when did you sort of come to the realization or when did you sort of have that inkling that you were, um, I suppose, you know, felt like you were, yeah. is, would it be accurate to say like felt like you were in the wrong body? You know, here's what I want to say before we move on. Don't ever feel yeah. like you can't say anything to me. I'm not that, <laughs> okay. I'm not that weirdo. So I'm not going to get all weird if you misgender me or whatever. <laughs> you probably won't, <laughs> yeah. but you know what I mean? Or if you yeah. say like when you are a female or any of that stuff, please don't get, because it's going to make our interview much easier. So I, I don't want you to feel like I'm going to get upset. I appreciate you call that. me a woman or, you know, any of it. Cause I did, I lived as a woman. So, yeah. so, so I always, I will tell you that even my parents will tell you that they, I think they told me the other day, like we remember when you were four and you were like, I want to be like dad. I want to, you know what I mean? And like wearing dad's, you know, wanting to wear dad's underwear and stuff like that. So, yeah. you know, I can say for pretty much my whole life, I have always felt like I wanted to be this, what you see here. This is what I wanted to be. I wanted to be that man, though. I know I'm not a man. That That's the really important part of this message to everybody out there. I'm, I'm not trying to say I'm a man and as a biological man, I'm trying to say I present as a man to the world. Yeah, and I think this is something where um, there's this sense of like, okay, uh, a trans woman is a woman or a trans man is a man, right. but it's almost like there's this discomfort of being a trans person, which That's right. I think like, That's right. why not just accept? Because I think, you know, you can be born a certain way and that's the right. reality of what you were born, but it's okay to be then... That's you right. Know, that's that, that's right. what I say all the time. I'm like, so you're acting as if it's not okay to be trans because that when you say I'm a, a trans woman as a woman, you are discounting what kind of woman that is. And it's important that we understand what kind of woman you are. It doesn't make you any less of a being or any less. I'm yeah. very proud of, I'm proud of my, of being a transsexual man. I am. I don't know. I don't walk around saying it. You know what I mean? Like I present as a man, I walk through the door as a man. I do. But the reason I think that that's happening is because today, as you see, there's a difference in the way I, the way I come to it is I want to present. I make a huge effort to be as masculine and be that dude as possible. Today, we have these trans people, like let's say, for example, trans women with beards and mustaches and saying they're women. And I don't, I'm not okay with that. I'm not, as a transsexual man, I'm not okay with that. I fought for years to get to, for you to accept me. You know, yeah. 10, 15 years ago, we probably would never be having this conversation. But today we do. And that's because of the elders before me. And and, and fighting to get into a space of all we want to do is coexist with you. So the newer trans space doesn't want to coexist with you. They want to take your space. Big difference. Yeah, and I find it I find it so strange because I think there's so many things kind of going on there that are not yes. necessarily part of trans. And look, I, I don't even know what it is 100% either. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, my suspicion is, you know, for, for years it was, you know, called I guess a mental illness and yep. I don't necessarily think that's what it is I you know it could be a biological thing it could be something well I will tell you that mental yeah I, I, honestly I do have a mental disorder I have no issues with that at all and in fact yeah. it's very important so so I want to say I'm sorry to cut mm -hmm. you off that that was rude, no it's okay but, but I just want to tell you that for me and 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 again for many of my friends we accept our diagnosis the diagnosis is the whole reason I'm here if I didn't get a diagnosis I wouldn't have known that I have gender dysphoria and that I can actually do this to myself it's like with anything if you get a diagnosis of cancer you're like oh that's why I was feeling so crappy all this right. time I got a diagnosis Diagnosis. So, you know, a diagnosis is not a bad thing. It's an actual good thing. And mental illness or mental disorders are not a bad thing at all. This 
th there is this huge pushback on mental illness, which I think is so ridiculous. It's a, it's actually something lots of human beings have. It's not a bad thing. And so when you sort of accept your diagnosis, which I have done, it enables me to, to fix the situation through hormonal, through surgery, you know, through presenting. So, so I know that I understand why you're saying that because there's this pushback from the community that says, we don't have a mental illness. Well, yeah, we kind of do. <laughs> and it's kind of okay. <laughs> well, I, I guess why I'm saying this is because I, I'm not sure that we have a hundred percent an understanding of where that is. Like it could be, it could be a mental disorder. Yeah. It could be something else that we just have yet to fully understand sure. too. Sure. Um, but I also think there is like, a lot of factors going on as to why people are identifying as such. So yeah. I, it seems like uh, gender dysmorphia and sort of the tradition, uh, dysmorphia? I said it wrong, didn't I? Dysphoria. Um, That's okay. Dysphoria. dysphoria. Yeah. I for some reason say it. Uh, but I do dysphoria. too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> um, but gender dysphoria, I think in um, in the traditional sense, like it, and from speaking to Colin as well and reading a bit about it, it does seem to pronounce itself generally quite early on. So like yeah. you said, you know, were four years old, you sort of uh, felt that. Um, but when it comes to, so, but there's also an assortment of other conditions, you know, there's social elements, there is autism, there's other things that are kind of onset uh, later on in people's lives. Um, I'm not an expert in this, but, uh, but there's a kind of a slew of things that kind of get conflated, it seems. And they are all kind of put in this one category. That's and then, right. and that's why you get these, say, men who are uh, now identifying as women but have beards. So, that's you know, right. and I think that's a very different category. That's um, right. But it all kind of gets pushed together. Um, which is a problem. You cannot lump me in the same space as that person because to me, that person doesn't have dysphoria because if they had dysphoria, they would not be walking around with a beard and mustache and a dress on. They wouldn't. It, no. That actually brings dysphoria on. Or if I was a trans man pregnant, I would never get pregnant, nor would I celebrate my pregnancy and talk about me being a man who's pregnant. I just, that's the most dysphoric or a man on my period or a man with a uterus or, you know what I mean? All of those things go against what gender dysphoria is. And so if you understand that, then you understand a newer generation of trans. The trans generation today is identifying as trans. I don't identify as trans. It's an, it's my gender dysphoria is my transness. But these people are just identifying as trans because they can. It's called self-ID. It means anybody can be trans now. You don't even have to go to a doctor and get a diagnosis. That opened a huge can of worms right there. That, that to me is the beginning of the end. And it seems like in terms of who speaks for the quote unquote community, <laughs> which I always found that term really, you yeah. know, kind of ridiculous, whether it's the gay community or even the That's female right. community. I mean, it's just yep. to me, it's just because you're born a certain way, you suddenly yep. belong to community. Right. But it seems like it's like suddenly it's the loudest voices, it's the voices that can get access to being a media spokesperson, you know, yep. who have friends in the media. Yep. What, what, what do you make of that? Because it's like, it's, it's only some people get to represent a huge group of people who might have very diverse points of views on these things. Well, you just said it. So those people don't <laughs> represent me. And it's why I do stand up. You know, I'm one of the oldest trans people out there and probably one of the more prominent trans men. I mean, trans men don't even really get to have a voice. If you notice, most of this is coming from trans women. Okay. Yes. If you notice most of the pushback, most of the nasty, angry, gross things being said that out there, especially to women, are trans women. And what are yeah. trans women? Biological males. Like, let's be real here. You know, like, I don't care if anyone calls me transphobic. That's the reality. I'm a biological female and they're biological males. I have a, I've been socially conditioned in a different way. Remember, 30 years of my life conditioned more female, if that makes sense, where they've been condition more male and you can see it you can actually so they took over they just literally came in and took the voice of everyone and they represent and you know i do think one of the things is you're right they're connected to other people in the media 
the um, the media tends to go for certain types of people and push a certain narrative. And that's what's happening. And that's why I have to step up and say, hey, wait a minute. That's not the whole story. You know, I have a lot to say here of somebody with lived, right? Remember, they also use all these terms, <laughs> yeah, lived, lived experience. experience. Well, hold on then, my friends, because I got 30 years lived experience, but mine doesn't count. So I can poke holes in all of what they do. It's It's nasty what they do. And it's scary. Like, um, it's it's interesting because, like, I, I mentioned to you earlier, one of the things that I found to be one of the scariest things to speak about is mm. is this particular issue. Mm. And like I said, I don't have particularly strong right. and controversial views. At least I don't think I do. No. Um, but this like label of being transphobic gets applied so quickly and so easily. <laughs> Nobody wants that, right? Like, that's like oh, no, the it's worst like, thing. Ah! <laughs> I'm like, I don't hate people who are trans. I don't dislike them. No. I don't fear them. I, no. I, I, I want the best for people. That's but right. there's this kind of sense of like, you say anything, but that shuts down narrative. And I think where, uh, or sorry, that shuts down conversation. That's and so right. the narratives are what thrives. That's and what right. happens is, so for example, where I, I think where it does a lot of damage um because i think once you start dealing with adults you know i have a very kind of liberal view of like mm -hmm. you know you're an adult you do what you want that's right but when you're dealing with kids um well, there's kids, there's also things that affect other people. So those are the two categories yeah, where it's like, right. well, it's quite essential to have conversations, right? So it's like yeah. um, space, women's spaces, which um, which I think, you know, there there's nuance. Like, it's not like, yeah. you know, and I've heard you talk about bathrooms, for example. And some okay. people are like, no, you can't go, you can't go into women's spaces right like at all bathrooms okay. yeah. but I do find that also to be a, a bit of an extreme position because That's you look right. at someone say like Blair White who looks That's right completely female and you yeah. who looks completely male it would be ridiculous for either yeah. of you to be using you know your 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 the sex you were born <laughs> as those bathrooms right right <laughs> so it's like, and, and the threat, you know, I, I don't know, <laughs> you know, I don't think, I don't think that trans people realistically, legitimately trans people who've transitioned are the ones who pose no. threats to, to women. Far so, from it. Far, far from, from it. it. They don't want to. All my trans women friends look like women. They, they, they're, that's why those are the more transsexual ones who want to, we want to pass. We make an effort to pass. We make, you know, most of the time it's harder for a, a, for a male to female, you know, they have to do much more cosmetic stuff. Most of the time that, you know, all I did is cut my boobs off, put them some <laughs> testosterone and grow a beard and, and go to the gym. Right. So yeah, at the same time, I make an effort to do this. Where, where I see a newer generation, you know, they always call me, I have passing privilege. I'm like, wait a minute here. This isn't a privilege. I work hard, you know, every right. day. I go to the gym. I do things. I make myself look this way. It's not a privilege to look this way, but I see this new generation that they don't want to pass. So if you don't want to pass, then you don't get to use the woman's room. Sorry. It's that simple. Because if you pass, nobody would say a word about it. They wouldn't. No. Never. Wh why would you say a word if you don't that, know? That's right. That's There's right. There's even friend. women, biological women who look kind of masculine. Like that's you just right. wouldn't know. You would never want to like question that or offend someone. Or, like, never say that ever. You would be never. like, uh, dude, you're in the wrong. You know, but I'll say back in the day before I transitioned, I was a very masculine woman. Right. So I did sort of mm -hmm. have that androgynous look to me. And sometimes women would be like, um, sir, you're in the wrong toilet and i mean actually i'm a girl <laughs> right, okay but, you know but i i didn't i didn't start crying and like freak out and like well ah, i got misgendered like i didn't well, do I that Dan, somebody i mean look i i kept, i was spontaneously when i was a little kid i i cut my hair off and i had like a little i looked like a little boy yeah and people did misgender me and i did feel sensitive about it so i kind of get it like i was and i was a sensitive kid so i kind of get it but like i like, don't 
You don't get it? I don't it? get it. You know why I don't get it? Because it right. happens. And what's happening is this. We are feeding into that insecurity as a community. We're saying, oh, gosh, everyone's misgen. We are feeding into that. I had to work through it. Thank gosh I had to work through it because I had to work through it, which made me a tougher person. And that's why I can walk the world this way. And nothing hurts me if you misgen. If you call me a lady, you think I care? So what's happening is we're giving a younger generation this idea that they can get so mad at somebody, even though they look like a girl, right? But their pronouns are he, they, they think for some reason he, they is going to make everyone see them as a dude. And I'm like, but you don't look like a dude. You have to understand people walk the world seeing things. I see a dog. I see a cat. You know what I mean? I see things that I can actually say what they are. Well, I mean, I, I mean, like you can be, I get the sensitivity, I don't get the anger. Like I, I, I get right. that we need to Different. be resilient, right? Different. Like for example, I felt like I need to work at being okay with it. Yes. Or like, you know, as a kid, I was bullied, right? Yes. But yes. it doesn't mean that I'm like, oh, I'm a perpetual victim now. It's more like, okay, you know what? That's that right. gives me that gives me empathy. Like right. maybe if I see someone alone in a room, like I'll treat them differently. Yeah. So I think it like um, it gives me a certain strength, actually, That's because right. I've gone through that experience. Right. That's right. And also you, got, you need to understand that even like this, people still come at me. People still call me a woman. You know, people still say you're yeah. never going to be a man. They do it. They will do it. It's why I'm trying to teach these young people. They will do it forever. It doesn't matter. I don't care what. Look at me. There's no way if I walk down the street, anyone ever knows I used to be a woman ever. But they still say no nonsense like that because people just that's how humanity is and how people are and sometimes people say mean things out of whatever reason and so i think we're teaching a younger generation really to to, to live in this fearful victimy space and they're not going to be a per, they're not going to move forward and they're not going to be you know uh, 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 they're not going to be successful in life that that's all i'm trying to say when i say things yeah. like that to the younger generation i'm like i get it it hurts your feelings but those are feelings and remember that what was the intention of the the person doing it that is also very important intention well they're they're trying to hurt you when they're oh well oh not yeah always you, no, no, not I understand, always I understand. yeah no, you're if you work at not. starbucks and you look like a girl but your pronouns are he they and then someone accidentally says thank you ma'am and then you lose no, your shit it, <laughs> no you're correct your intention most of the time people's intention is not to hurt you that's right now if if the people on the internet intentionally doing this to you right. their intention is to hurt you that's right but when you are acting out and lashing out you are giving their words power that's so, right oh you there. got it my friend <laughs> <laughs> But I think, and I think what has happened is that it has, because you've got these two extremes now, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, so you've got people, on the one hand, you've got people who sort of demand that you, you know, respect their beards and their, and their womanhood <laughs> and, and their pe- non-existing periods, which I do, <laughs> I do find that like. Oh you know, God! Don't get me started little... on the period yeah. thing. I... <laughs> I mean, that was a level. Like, listen, I'm I'm open minded to a very Come large on. extent, but this is a level of like that that goes way beyond my no. my level of um, to tolerance. And tolerance. <laughs> yeah, that's like dude, <laughs> like that's just <laughs> uh, you know, I, as somebody who's suffered. Yeah, like, me too. <laughs> right, you too. Exactly. Like quite a bit. Like, I'm, like you could have your pain like but that's, that's let's right call it something else that's right else. right on yeah. right this on. is the thing and that's what we were talking about like being trans like that's a different experience it's a unique experience that's like right. don't diminish that either like i didn't have that experience and you didn't have the exact same experience as me that's okay and uh, but go ahead <laughs> it's reality it's it's called reality. These people aren't living in reality. I as a as a man now, I actually did get my period. Okay, you are a biological dude. You're never gonna. Get, you're not even getting period cramps. Okay, I, I had it out with this trans woman. I'm like, oh, what? Well, I have symptoms, Buck. I go, really? How do you know those are symptoms? How do you know when you've never had your period? So you don't know that those are symptoms. Like it makes me so mad because there they go. They're just continually, you know, taking and taking from the women's space. And, you know, I fought for women's rights. My When I was a hardcore 
hardcore dyke, like queer nation and all that. Like I have fought for women's rights. Women have always been in this space and they still are. And you think it's okay for trans women, a small minority, very, very small to come in and just sort of go in sports and like, nope, sorry, we're taking this over right now. And just all the things they're doing is, you know, now we're going to rename like people with periods and, you know, people get pregnant. No, we're not. We're not going to do that because what we're doing is we're, we're literally taking away from a huge, like pretty much half the world. We're taking away from them. And why is that okay to do? That's what I don't understand. Why is that okay? <laughs> well, and I suggested, and I ended up, you know, every time I have a Google alerts to my name, because I freak out, <laughs> and um, I, I've, I've commented on, I think it was like birthing people or something like that, and I said, why don't you just call, you know, pregnant women and, if you want to be inclusive, <laughs> go ahead, be inclusive, but like, why don't you just say birthing, pe uh, I mean, pregnant women and trends <laughs> Wait, there you, you go. Something. Just there include go. people, right? That's Instead right. of is, is it so hard just to use extra words to be inclusive? Like no, but that's inclusive? why I know it's bullshit. Sorry, but that's why I know because the the, the inclusive diverse community is not diversive and inclusive because if that was the case, they would not be trying to wipe out the word woman and they would not be trying mm -hmm. to take it over. Right? So trans women are not women. I'm going to say it here right now. Trans women are not women. They are trans women. And, and like, we got to stop playing into this because it's very dangerous when we start to play into these games. They're going into prison systems now because they're women and very bad things are happening in these prison spaces because they're not women. They're biological men who want to look and act like women. Big difference. Well, and and the, from my understanding, most of this isn't even happening with like, say, like, like I'm going to call it legitimate trans women, right? Yeah, like, that's right. It's calling, it's, it's like, that's right. it's people who are claiming that for their benefits right. because it's yep. convenient and they are often, you know, predators. So it's not yep. even like benefiting actual trans women. Nope. It's so... And this is the thing, because I understand like uh, a trans woman who's been, you know, who's transitioned a while ago, has is, is gone through mm -hmm. the process mm -hmm. and is now has committed a crime, is now going through the prison system and is being put in a male population. Mm -hmm. That's a hard thing. Like, I mm -hmm. understand the concern there. Like, and sure. I think we should address that. I think of it's course. a legitimate thing. Um, so I'm not a poet, like I, I'm not a, you know, well, famous. I'm not either. I mean, <laughs> but the thing is, is that you can't just plop when a woman, when a, when a man all of a sudden never said they were trans before. And last year right. they decided they were a woman because self ID, they don't even have to go through a system. That's the part that's said. Now that being said, yes, but I've always said we need to propose a different space. Right. Yeah. So when, you know, they did it for gay men who said they were homosexual in prison, they put them in a space away from gen pop because they couldn't be in gen pop because they would be totally beat up or killed or raped or all. So they did the same with gay men. They still do that. But why don't they just do that with trans people in prison? Right. They should do the same thing. You right. know, trans, Trans men, trans men are in prison, but no one talks about that. And they're mistreated constantly. Do you see a trans man saying, I want to go to men's prison? Do you ever see that? Yeah, I find that interesting because you're correct in that I've not seen trans men nope. do any of these things. And I have, I've actually looked into, I've, I've been on some Reddit groups. I mean, I'm, I'm endlessly curious. So, awesome. uh, and I've I've looked at the discussions, and there tends to be just a generally more of a tendency to want to fit in, mm -hmm. um, take mm -hmm. on more traditional masculine roles, mm -hmm. and not this kind of like demanding That's of right. taking over spaces. So I don't. 100% understand what that's all about. And maybe that is all about because there is a different um, mental condition involved here. Because like I said, the the people being sort of diagnosed with being trans or gender, yeah. I'm going to say it wrong again. <laughs> gender dysphoria. <laughs> dysphoria. Dysphoria, thank you. <laughs> yeah, dysphoria, gender yeah. dysphoria. Um, I don't think it's gender dysphoria that's happening here. I think, like I said, it's like multiple conditions and this is one of these conditions that is not gender dysphoria. So these may not very be 
you know, what I would call t- trans people. I'm going to get so sh- <laughs> sad. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're actually talking to an, o- you're talking to an old school trans person who is agreeing okay. with you. And I agree. Yeah. That's why, that's why I'm very mad about it. Because that being said, they need to go through a diagnostic space. You need to be diagnosed. You can't just say you're a transsexual person so that you yeah. can clearly get put into the women's uh, prison so that now you're having sex. They're having sex. These uh, Most of these trans it's women, in fact, I think all of them have penises. So they're going yeah. into a women's space. Of course there's going to be sex in there. And then the trans, the women in prison are getting pregnant and there's all kinds of stuff that we're not, you know, and how do I know this? Because I work with a with a group of a, a prison group for women, I'm working with them in order because the trans men are being completely destroyed in this whole thing. None of them are getting what they need. They're actually being given top surgery. Trans men are being given top surgery in prison and all the top surgeries are being botched. So, so they're getting really messy top surgeries are getting really sick. One person got their artery cut or something during a top surgery. I'm like, what? I've never even heard of that before. So we're not even discussing what's happening with trans men in prison, oh, but we're just like all everything. What I said earlier, everything is about trans women and that should have yeah. everybody a little bit more like, wait a minute, where if it's a trans conversation, why are we not talking about trans men in this conversation? It's true. Yeah. I almost, almost never. In never. fact, I would say never, never. hear about trans men. Really, nope. truly That's never right. do. And then, I mean, and then the whole thing to me is like the affirmative care side of it, right? Because that's really, to me, the problem with it is like, yeah. Yeah. because I want people to be able to, you know, I, I even wrote a sub stack about this because mm-hmm. I was watching a, I was going through a marathon of medical drama <laughs> and they had an interesting episode where the guy comes in and he wants to cut his arm off, which, you know, sounds crazy. Right. Yeah, yeah. And they stop him. And, you know, um, but finally he, he, you know, like he's, they've tried everything, psychiatric care, everything. Right. And mm-hmm. in the end, he just manages to cut it off wow. and, and he's, you know, he feels calm. And so I thought about it as, as bizarre as that sounds like it, it did automatically. I don't know if they meant to do this with the episode, but I couldn't help but make that comparison. And I don't know if the readers of my article made the comparison. A lot of them didn't, um, but I, I did when I was writing it. But there's something about that. Like if that's the only thing that's bothering a person, how, who are we really to say that like, maybe if that does solve it, like, but what if it's every limb? Like, I, it is such a difficult question. Well, it's why you need to go through therapy. It's, you know, I had to go back yeah. in the day. They had a system that I had to go through a system, right? It's why I'm solid. I really do believe I've never looked back. Mm-hmm. I've never thought about D transit. None of it. It literally changed my life because I had to do two years of extensive uh, therapy for my brain to sort of understand what I was about to do and that what I was about to do was irreversible. And so th- all those steps created this person you see today. And thank God that I went through what I call a safety, right? They call it gatekeeping. I call it safekeeping. Mm. And and we've lost safekeeping. We don't do it anymore. We're just like, okay, you think you're trans? We're going to take your word for it at 15 at Planned Parenthood. And we're going to write you a script right now after 15, really, I'm not even kidding, 15 yeah. minute intake. Yeah, you know it. And then bam, you're, and then they send you home with your script of testosterone. And then they tell you to go to YouTube and learn how to inject the testosterone. I'm like, what? That is so, you could hurt yourself. You know, you could get into some something with Vain. the needle. It, it could yeah. break. It could have air bubbles in it. It could, so many things that are dangerous. And we're telling a kid to go on YouTube and learn how to inject this. This is how sloppy and so I do understand affirmative health care, which I, fir- I think is a really bad way to call it. But that being said, but you have to go through things before you can make that choice to, you know, all of a sudden take a body part off, you know, and well, that's exactly. why I don't think I don't think a 15 year old can actually make that choice unless they've been through extensive, you know, psychotherapy. Well, I think we have the evidence that they can't because, you know, we have the de- transition. That's right? right. That's right. But. I think like I'm not even 100 percent like I know some people are like kids can never, ever, ever make that choice. I'm not even in that camp. No, I think in this 
in this in this environment because we have these political this political climate yeah. of where people can't really talk about it because we yeah. have this like affirmative care as opposed to maybe some european countries which interestingly enough are more progressive than <laughs> <laughs> you know it's 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 interesting and but they're much more willing to be like oh we made a mistake let's well let's that's europe support. Well, there yeah. you go. We're we're just we're we're all about money here. You come on, we we know what's happening here. It's so obvious. There's so much money being made in affirmative, you know, care. Yeah, and, and I've seen it on stock market. Mar I think it's called Market Watch. I literally saw them say invest in trans surgery. It's going to be a five billion dollar business. They're literally telling people to invest in it. So I'm like, come on, man. This wow. is so gross. And, and for, look. I do think a 15 year old, if they're going through some serious, you know, mental health care and they're really making, I do think they can, I've met a couple and they seem solid, but they went through yeah. a system. I do not think a 10 year old can make the choice of being on puberty blockers that will sterilize them. And we all know it. And anyone who's out there, who's telling you that's not true, they're wrong. Uh, I can send you tons of evidence. Lupron sterilizes you. Not only that, it also takes away your orgasmic space. So you're going to do that to a kid without that's not consensual on any way, shape or form. <laughs> yeah, it's gross. And I think I think because it's a, like and maybe there are some extreme fringe cases. But again, because you don't have a system where you have that like two year process where that's you right. have the therapy, right. where you can understand where you where that's you've right. evaluated every course. Where... Yep. And that's the problem that I see here, because yep. I think if we were talking about a couple of years ago and I see the same thing with like uh, Canada approved, you know, euthanasia, which I was for. Right. Me like too. I was me too. Yeah. Yeah. And I am for it. But yeah, but we've got the same kind of problem creeping in. And, and that worries me because I'm like, well, are, are people being evaluated properly? Are they being told, uh, hey, I let see. that be the, the solution to all your problems? Because now you can get it for depression, for example, which I'm not even like, well. <laughs> hey, maybe there are some cases of depression, right? Like maybe the person has tried every single thing. Well, there you go. Of course, but they There's aren't always administering exceptions. it only to that, right? So that's the problem right. that I'm seeing. And right. so... And it's like, right. I never anticipated that that's where it would go. No. And, and so that's, that's the issue here as yeah. opposed to, cause, cause I'm always like, I'm very pro, you know, freedom of choice. Like I'm, Me too. that's what I believe in. Yeah. Um, but, and, and I don't want, you know, the government choosing over the individual. No, that's not where I'm at. But as an adult, you should be able as an to make adult. any, as an adult, we're yeah. talking about kids. And let me just say this here. I, I am here for the kids. I don't care what any, cut every limb off of your whole body, dude, and become a beach ball. I really don't care. That's what you want to do. And it makes well, you feel who do plastic surgery. So <laughs> totally. Like thing, you go yeah. right ahead. I really feel as an elder in this community and somebody who it did change my life and it did, you know, help me become a better person. I want other people to have what I have, but I want it in a way that says, hold on here. It, it, if anything you do fast, you're going to screw up anything. I don't care what it is. You do it too fast. You're, you're, you're missing out on things. All I'm saying is we need to slow down. There could be some trans kids out there, no doubt about it, but to just shove medication because the child says they're trans. I have a 10 year old son. Believe me, they change their mind on a daily basis. <laughs> don't tell me kids don't, you know, one day you want to wear this costume. The next day you want to wear that costume to, to put a kid in that medicalized space. So early, I think is absurd. And, um, dangerous and we're seeing it now we're seeing the dangers of these things uh, just rolling out like oh there, there's five thousand trans kids really how did that happen and how come there wasn't five thousand trans kids 10 years ago yeah do you think there's a confusion amongst like because there is this kind of idea of like okay well sex is one thing right it's biological yeah, yeah. But gender you mm -hmm. know the, it's That's almost right. like because i always felt like we should we were sort of moving or we're in the process of moving away from like that label of like, okay, mm -hmm. like as a, as, as a female, That's I right. should be able to like, say, <laughs> wear a suit. Okay. That's right. Tie. Cause I actually love men's clothing. I would love to dress up. I like feminine clothing too, but I like men's clothing. Yeah. And, 
but now I know, like, if I wore men's clothing, it'd be like a, a whole statement. So I'm like, oh my I, god, I, you'd be non-binary or some. I'd shit. be non-binary or something, right? <laughs> so I'm like, so I'm like, I feel uncomfortable wearing it, right? Because yeah, I don't want to make a whole statement with my clothes. Um, but like, and for men, like, I'm like, men wearing makeup, totally cool. Like, why not? Yeah. Like, I, of like, and 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 people made these huge statements about what's his name, like this musician, like he was wearing. Oh, Sam Smith, that one. Sam or... Smith, yeah. Like, okay, who cares? So he who wears cares? whatever he wears. But they make these like he's sick. He's uh, they were equating it to like being a, a groomer, a pedophile, a pedophile. Uh. A I'm freaking so you, you, because he's wearing what like a an apron or a dress or whatever he was wearing. He's a pedophile. Like the wow. the, the absurdity of jumping from that to that. I just wow. that discourse to me is kind of sickening. It's gross. But he's an adult. He's an adult. He's an and adult. also, did people not forget about Boy George or Bowie or I mean, there's so many people that have <laughs> and we used to call that gender queer, okay, or not you know non-conforming. It's basically gender non-conforming. It's the same thing. They're just calling it non-binary now, and it isn't weird to me because that's what people are. They should be able to find their expression, and it should be okay. The reason why those people are saying those kinds of things is because the trans community itself is pushing and saying really disgusting shit to people so i told i keep saying it when one pushes the other one pushes back and then now we're in this sort of war between each other like this person calling turfs and these people calling us groomers and you know now there's this all of this insanity happening on both sides yeah and in, and i see it in both sides and i see it getting more yep. extreme like it's gross um, you actually don't necessarily see it getting more extreme on the on the um, on the trans side because it's already <laughs> it's where it's gonna be <laughs> but i have been seeing it getting way more radical and i, I think right. i mentioned it to you earlier uh That's before right. we started a conversation where i've seen how when that whole groomer discourse started you know it's just like i immediately felt really uncomfortable with that yeah, because me too. It was this conflation of like yeah. somebody's um, okay. Well, to me, first of all, groomers, this idea of like sexually grooming someone to become, you know, or right. like it's it's a pedophilic That's kind right. of pedophilic. That's right. And I think, you know, as much as people sort of complain, the left is changing words, is, and I call it, I call this word misappropriation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, now I see the, the exact same thing is is happening sort of on the right. Yep. And and yep. groomer, I think, is an excellent example of that. Yep. And and so, and I remember I posted something kind of countering that, and people got very mad <sighs> at me, of course. <laughs> but they were like, but almost like they were upset that I wasn't allowing them to use this word or was speaking up about it. But then people's interpretation of the word, as I found out, were by their comments was like all over the place. There were people who actually took it to mean actually pedophilia. Okay. And other people who, okay. you know, it was like, just some something very innocent, like something totally different, right? <laughs> All over the place. It was like, you know, somebody talking about their husband at school, you know, and they're no groomer is a very specific thing. And that's why I when someone calls me a groomer because I've worked in the pornography business, I, I'm very insulted by that. I work in an adult space. It's called adult entertainment. And it's for very specific people. You don't you only you have to go looking for it. Right. So it's not something that I'm just flinging around. And, and so I mm -hmm. take really offense to that because I work in a legal business and I do things for adults who can consenting adults. And that means something. Groomers. Yeah are creepy people who and you can groom not on not you can groom an adult but mo most of the time i think it's really what you said earlier for pedophilia and somebody an adult grooming a child to be sexual with them and it's a you know back in the day in the gay world we, we you know the the the, the nambla remember national association of man boy love you might not oh, you, yeah, you might yeah, be yeah, too yeah, young yeah. no but i know they, i do know of it yeah. yeah so so they tried to latch on to the gay man space and we went what? <laughs> Get away from us. And today we have Mal Maps, right? So they, they literally changed mm -hmm. the definition and call it Maps now and expecting the trans community to sort of embrace this map space. It's it's actually getting creepy and weird. And as somebody who's very pro-sex and so, grooming has nothing to do with any of that. It's a non-consensual, creepy, weird, you know, It's and it has to do with, you know, grooming a child into a space of, of sexual 
stuff. It's disgusting. And so, you know, when you get called, you, someone calls you or me a groomer, they're, they're doing a disservice to the actual real meaning of that word and why that word is very important, but we've lost it now because everyone just throws it against like transphobia. Everyone's transphobic. Yeah, yeah that's right. And I, I see it no different than, you know, how people misuse the word Nazi or white. Oh my God. Oh my racist. God. It's oh like if God. everyone is a white supremacist, then no one's a white supremacist. <laughs> that's you know, like, right. <laughs> I mean, I got called, uh, I got called a white supremacist. Me too. All like, the time. All the right? time. I'm Jewish. Nazi. I'm like, are you <laughs> like, literally my partner's Jewish. And we're like, we go, our kid goes to a Jewish school. Are you kidding me? Like, don't, don't do that. That is so nasty. The way they fling Nazi around is nasty and gross. And you know what I mean? It's like saying the N word all the time. All of a sudden you can just start calling everybody that. Like, what are you talking about? You have to look, you know, you have a responsibility whether or not people understand that or not, you have a responsibility of what comes out of your mouth. And if you're not being responsible for that, then you are contributing to the downfall of what's happening right now, because you're just spitting out things without understanding what you're spitting out. No, exactly. But I have been noticing, like it just, it seems to have been getting far more extreme and I understand yes. it. You get it. I, like you said, it is a, a, a reaction or overreaction yes. uh, to, I think if you, you know, obviously the narratives and I think uh, of course, like the suppression and I think people are kind of getting a taste of, of a little bit of power. And this is, and I think what happens is like, I think when people feel themselves kind of a victim, Yes. And I think that's what's happening is like, I think, yes. and, and maybe that's what's been happening on the left too. It's like this sense of like victimhood turn yes. into, hey, we got a little bit of power, or a lot of power actually, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of institutional power mm -hmm. and power, media mm -hmm. power, cultural power. And now that they have this power after, you know, there has been um, uh, certain abuses and, and, and all, sort, all sort of discrimination, all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. But now that the victim has power, we're going to do this wow. thing with the power. Yeah. And, and now on the right or the oppositional force, whatever you want to call it, you know, I hate the left rights thing. but that's... I know, me too. But how else do you explain it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hard. It's hard to kind of. It's yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. But it's like, but it, that is what happened. You know, my, my dad would often tell me the story about, um, you know, when he was in the military and, you know, ma mandatory military. Uh -huh. But um, he, you know, the, the, the new soldiers would come in because they had sort of hazing rituals, right? The, uh -huh, the right. Sort of mandatory. And they were terrible, terrible rituals. But the, the, after the new recruits have gone through it and they get their own batch of recruits they were like oh we can't wait they couldn't wait to do the same thing that was done to them right? <laughs> and there's right. that mentality right yeah so i think that's kind of like in part what's happening yeah there you know but then on top of it it's like now they're getting a little bit of power or maybe they might be getting a lot of power i mean i honestly don't know where it's heading and it's like and i'm seeing it just grow and grow and grow yep. Yep. and it is it's like you said it's getting nasty and it's yep. getting like i corrected there was somebody who tweeted um the miss i think it was 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 it miss universe or, or oh, miss gosh. world pageant <laughs> and she said it is now miss universe is now trans Oh. Which wasn't an accurate statement of fact, yeah, even because right? right. it was yeah. it, it's owned by I can't remember which pageant it was, but it was like it's owned by a trans person. It's not, yes. but the, the the winner was not. That's so I right. corrected that, and and I said, hey, like that's not accurate, and mm -hmm. you know if you're interested in being honest, like you would. <laughs> fact <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you know there was no correction but i got attacked like oh, in the God. comments right but the comments were just so vile yep. so legitimately transphobic right not yeah. the not the things that trans you know trans yeah. activists call it transphobic but like legitimate right. transphobic and um and just vile but also just like stupid because they weren't like reading my uh, correction that's properly right because right? it was just a yeah. correction it was it was just fact 
Oh no, but they can't handle it. They, they lose, they lose it. They, you know, uh, and everyone does that. That's it, uh, probably was that Twitter. Cause yeah, <laughs> they lose Twitter. it. I mean, it's, it's like a cesspool. I, I throw a tweet out and I run. <laughs> I mean, kidding. <laughs> I put it out and I'm like, see you later. <laughs> I'm not going to even yeah, look hit at run. it. Tweet, tweet, <laughs> and run, right? tweet and run. Cause I'm like, Oh God, they're all going to be like, blah, 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 blah. you know, people just, yeah, they feel like, I also feel like people feel like they have to be right. People aren't willing to be wrong anymore. People aren't willing to just sit back and say, okay, I'm going to listen to this for a minute and maybe I'm going to get a different opinion. Everyone's very opinionated now and very much stuck in their opinion without giving space to, well, maybe I could change my mind a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, I've changed my mind a lot over the last 10 years on certain things. I I was very pro-transitioning children uh, probably five or so years ago. And I started doing my research on it because someone said to me, Buck, why don't you go look at something here? And I said, okay, that's fair enough. I'll do that. And I did. And I was like, uh, wow, that's not what the trans community is telling me. So, you know, I think we've lost this idea that you've got to do some due diligence and you've got to look at other side. I follow all kinds of people, by the way, I don't just follow people I like or people that are speaking like me. I follow people that hate me. And I do that for a reason because you've got to see what's going on there. And people will say, Oh, Buck, why are you following X, Y, and Z? I'm like, you actually know who I'm following. That's <laughs> creeping me out. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> oh my God. Like, what are you doing? Seeing all the people I follow. It's, you know, it's just a weird world. We can't. I had somebody opinion. go through um, <laughs> a whole history of who I followed and in what order and how I must have changed. So, like, I used to follow more leftist people and just more reasonable. And yeah. then I've become more extreme <laughs> because now <laughs> I follow more people on the right. And so I must have, this is what happened. Like, they did a whole psychoanalysis on me. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> And people still definitely challenge like some of the people I follow and some of the oh, people yeah. I follow, I don't even want it. Like I follow, I follow them yeah. for a similar reason that you yep. do. Yep. Like I'm just trying to be like a little bit and, and they bug the heck out of me with their opinions. Like, but I, I know, just, me too, like, but I don't care. I have to challenge myself to not like unfollow them. <laughs> well, no, me too. You know, I follow Matt Walsh who, uh, it, you know, mm-hmm. in the beginning, I'm going to follow this guy and see what he has to say. And then like, there was a couple of things I actually really liked because he was really sticking up for women. But then he started getting like creepy and weird and really angry and really like, dude, you're over talking women. Like, yeah, it's really cool that you want to support women, but come on, let women have <laughs> <laughs> the opportunity to speak for themselves here, dude. And then he just started getting nasty. And then, you know, I stopped following him because I didn't like what I was seeing. And I realized, okay, I got this guy. I see how he is. Well, if you're not going to learn anything, potentially, yeah. like I, I think there's yeah. a level of like where it's it's not, it's more like it's not going to challenge your beliefs at that no, point. That's right. And I th- and I think with him, it was like I did listen to stuff in the beginning at some point. What I don't like about people... And this is, I got some flack about today because I kind of went and challenged him and I guess <laughs> by definition his fans. I just feel like, like I guide myself with like, okay, what's useful? Mm-hmm. Like he's speaking to the converted and he's, and he's mm-hmm. making them angry. And this is in That's general right. what I'm seeing, right? Like That's it's right. like the people who do well on Twitter and social media platforms, they're good at, at this outrage game, you know? Yep. Maybe they feel that, like, I'm not saying it's not genuine. He, he, he might believe, I'm sure he believes all this stuff, but like, but it's like, but it's this outrage and he, it fuels more outrage and it plays, it does the exact same thing that the, the people they propose, you know, say they're against. They yep. do the, the, they're playing the same game. So why should I follow them? Um, and, and it also like, okay, if you're really against, uh, transitioning in children. So who does the most transitions in children? It's going to be liberals, right? It's for, for the sure. Most yeah. Part, yeah, for sure. And, yeah. and it's going to be, and, you know, well, he might assume they're the devil, but I, I tend to believe that they're probably parents who kind of care about their children and just mm-hmm. think it's the best thing for them. So That's maybe, right. He might think they're misguided and uh, okay, fair enough. Maybe they're misguided, Mm -hmm. but 
how do you speak to people? How do you change somebody's mind who's misguided by villainizing them, by saying they are the mortar, yeah. you know, they're the That's golems right. of the world and should deserve to burn in hell? Or do you like, you know, make good arguments? Do, so, and I know I get, I get like called out things for that and I'm naive or whatever, or I'm a fence sitter or I'm a coward, like whatever. A fence sitter. Me. Oh yeah, I get called... <laughs> I get called a fence sitter oh, lately. <laughs> and, 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 you know, apparently that's the safest position, except it's not because you can get knocked it's off not. very easily. If you that's sit. right. It, it's you not. You probably develop a rash and you have <laughs> no claws, you know, <laughs> and, you, and you have no side to defend you, right? Like, that's so you're, right. You're no, you're no man's land. That's so right. It's like the most unsafe position. That's right. um, but like, I genuinely believe that that is not the way these extremist ways are no. not the way forward. And no. so, but also they're not serving. So, okay. So the arguments that people made, and I did concede talking about changing your mind is mm -hmm. that maybe some of what he did led to policy changes, mm -hmm. but then the policy changes that he's making are, are only in red States basically, because right. he's not going to make any progress in any blue States. And nope. yeah, there may be some blue voters in those States and then now he's, you know, forced into these things because, yep. you know, I understand Republicans only, as they say, um, want to be left alone, except when it comes to. Except. There you go. <laughs> but <laughs> but <Ridiculous>. it's like, <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> but I feel like ultimately, you know, you, if you want to make a real change and you want to make a change that affects more people, you got to work with people That's and you've right. got to, and right. you know what, there's a lot of, like I worked in the film industry. There's mm -hmm. a lot of, it's not a right wing industry. Nope. And there's a lot of people who share these concerns. Yeah. So if you want to reach them, you don't reach them in these ways. No, you're just divide. You're making more divide. And that's, look, trans people are going to be here forever. Whether you like us or not, we're going to be here. That's the reality. And we've been here. We have been here. The problem yeah. is, is that there's a part of the trans community that has become radical activists. And they're not about the transition. They're about something else. I can't really tell you what it is, but there's something else there. So that has caused people like Matt Walsh and all those other people to just think we're all crazy and we have to all shut it down, which is totally horrifying for me to see. So yeah. as a 60 year old and somebody who's transitioned 30 years ago, I'm pretty set. You know, I, I don't have to worry about anything. If my medicine, I can get it if it isn't legal or whatever. I'm, I'm fine. I worry about the younger people who do need what I had. You know, it's an actual real thing. They do have gender dysphoria and they need to transition. But now we're going at such extremes to shut the whole thing down and nobody's trans and it's all ideology. And, 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 you know, I'm going to say that I do believe the trans activism really created this and not ne necessarily the hardcore right, but the trans activists created this pushback on us because, you know, I've seen a lot of change in the last 10 years. And I can tell you as a transsexual, I have a huge amount of rights in this country. And it's the reason why I live free. So this idea that trans rights or human rights are, we need our rights. We have a lot of rights, more rights than these people seem to understand. But now those rights that we all fought for are being taken away because it got yeah. too extreme from the trans activism. I'm gonna say activists, not the trans community, the trans activists and doing crazy stuff. And then when you start bringing children, I'm sorry, but I said it. When you bring children into this space and you start saying sex changes for children, you're, we're, we're done. And I knew it. I mean, once you bring children into anything, right? Look at the drag queen freak out. Cause everyone's like, ah! we can't have drag queens around kids well we shouldn't have done that i'll be honest with you drag queens are in an adult space like you know drag stuff is very sexual and it has a very much of a adult themed space so if we wanted to have kids around drag queens we should have done it in a way that wasn't sort of like in your face like look at this that it. i looked at so i think the idea behind and i read some of the papers about it like or glanced at it. I shouldn't say read. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, I mean, the papers seem to be indicating that the idea behind the drag shows for kids was to sort of embrace the idea of like that there is, you know, trans, uh, that there is drag, there's diversity, and mm -hmm. to sort of have kids kind of be on board with that early on, which is a very ideological position. That's right. 
Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but I think, you know, if you have like, and I've seen some drag uh, performances where they're very like, you know, they're very nice. Like the, the performance. Oh, sure. Like, sort of read the books and they're. they're well, yeah. And they're, they're buttoned up. They're like they're this. They're buttoned and... up. They're yeah, very totally. Polite. There's nothing inappropriate. That's different. I don't think that's so bad. But no. when you're looking at like some of the other performances, absolutely they're problematic. Absolutely. They're the long and I, yeah. yeah. And so yeah. the two kind of get conflated together, right. which is like, and I don't really understand right. parents who are like, I think they're just, a, it's just like you're supposed to accept everything. And so they're afraid to cut it, even challenge that because they're of like, of course. To yeah. Be, yeah. People don't want, they don't want to seem like they're anti LGBT because you see how they positioned it all. They've positioned it. Who's ever really ahead of all this stuff? They're great marketers. They, they positioned it so that you can't say anything or else you're a bigot or you're a transphobe yeah. or you're, you know, homophobic or you're, no, I'm telling you, as someone who's <laughs> an elder in this community, we should not be having boobies out and and twerking and, doll- to a- and kids putting dollar bills in the <laughs> what no i'm gonna tell you no as a parent as a transsexual as all no and as somebody who works in the adult space no 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 it is no very bizarre <laughs> to me and it is bizarre how easy you can be accused of these things and i'm like thinking about it i'm like that's right why am i afraid of being like listen i that's- i was somebody who's never in my life been like, like I've accepted, you know, people, I mean, being accepting of gay people and things like that is, is mm. not that like, it's relatively recent to the extent that That's it is. That's right. That's right. And when I went to high school, people were not, I mean, people made yeah. jokes and, and right. bullied all that stuff. And I actually was somebody who like, I don't know. It just naturally always understood it. And mm-hmm. Same with trans, like everything. Like I just, I just inherently understood. It, never really had to kind of think about it. Yeah. But and whereas a lot of these people probably didn't, didn't. No. and they're the ones who are actually the probably the biggest bullies in this regard now. That's so right. I find that like really ironic. I know it is kind of. I mean, it's just messy. And I, I, I part of me is like. Are they doing all this to say, look over here, look over here? Why other stuff is happening over here? Because I do believe those things do happen. Like, why is this such a huge thing now? Drag queens, trans. Why is it just like at the tip of everyone's? Why is the president of the United States bringing somebody like Dylan Mulvaney to the White House? Why? Why is that? That is not okay. I'm not okay with that. I'll be honest with you. First off. He's far from a represent, or I'm sorry, I apologize. She is far from a representation of this community. Why didn't you bring an elder, some, you know, an older person who's been around doing, championing the rights of this community forever? No, I agree. Somebody who just transitioned did not really make sense to me at all. It was ridiculous. Just, from just a very objective point of view. Has that person didn't say anything that re- yeah, it didn't reflect anything for me at all. And yeah. it, they're not reflecting the trans community. So you have to bring somebody who, who who has a little bit more nuance in our space. And we have lots of people who've been doing this work for a million years. So I'm just saying that says something weird to me. Like, why is the White House bringing people like that? And they've never done that before. And they're only flying the trans flag or whatever that flag is on the outside of our White House. I'm like, what? What about all other kinds of groups of people? If you're flying one flag, you got to fly other flags. You can't just fly the trans, whatever that flag is. The progressive. I don't know. It's these movements. Like, I don't, no, I, I don't know. Like I mean, there's lobbying power behind it. Oh, or... sure. It's money. It's yeah, all money. It's money. There's no doubt. For sure. Well, you're right. I mean, when an industry gets created, it's like, even with the pronouns, I remember, like, I didn't think much of them in, originally. And then when I saw that LinkedIn started putting them in, I was like, oh, that's it. It's like, okay. We're screwed. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay, whatever. Do your, <laughs> do your thing. But then, oh. Okay, now it's on a corporate level. Yeah, okay, scary. That's it. That's no, it. no, that's what I said. I'm like, holy crap. It's like literally people at like Forbes are doing, I'm like, oh, wow, this is so scary. No, I don't well, like COVID stuff like that. too, like with COVID testing and stuff like that. Yep, um, yep. I was like, okay, or masks. Like it's just, yep. it's just very hard, whether you agree with it or not, it doesn't really matter. It's just that yeah. once you create an industry, that's that right. industry wants to stay there. That's right. So it's going to do everything in its power. And the bigger the industry, 
it's like electric car. I mean, I, I have one, so it's not like I'm bashing yeah, electric cars, yeah. but like if you want, but if you want other kinds of uh, energy, that's right, you know, but everybody's invested in this one infrastructure. Right. Good luck. That's <laughs> you know? right. No, no, that's a great analogy. And I, I do. How come everyone is pushing? Why are we? Pu Let me say something about transition. Medical should be the last resort. It should not be the first resort. There's stuff going on here, kiddo. There's a lot yeah. of stuff going on with your kiddo. And you got to get your kid not into affirmative therapy because that's not therapy. It's just saying, okay, you said you're done. And then like, there mm -hmm. you go. You're not dealing with what's going on here. And I'm telling you, it's going to crash and burn maybe in five, maybe in 10, maybe in 20. And then the kid's going to get pissed because you didn't do the right thing for that kid. So we are putting the cart before the horse on some level. We're saying medicalize, medical, it'll, it'll fix everything. When we've proven that it doesn't that that all the studies and all the other countries shut down they stopped everything because they said it's not actually working and we're ramping it up in the united states because it's costs a lot those puberty blockers are like forty eight thousand dollars or some insan insanity yeah. like that it's all money well and i looked at because i was wondering like okay why why did people not like do the full transition okay so i looked yeah. into that and yeah. then i was like okay well a suicides are very high after the fact and then mm -hmm. it's like okay why is that That's right. so for so so first of all like you said a that is probably not being fixed yep. to the actual operations the success rate is actually very like the odds of things going wrong is go. very high there's That's so right. many complications people can't experience pleasure there's mm -hmm. there's an open like just once yeah. i started learning about that i was like oh, okay if you can avoid the if you can live a fulfilled enough life without right. that operation do that uh, so I certainly don't question anybody at this point about not doing that operation. That's right. uh, but but the but the but the uh, infrastructure is there. The industry is there. So they no doubt are pushing people because that's how they make money. That's right. And, and that is scary because those people are in a vulnerable position. If I was in that position myself, like I probably right. would consider that. And, you know, if, if somebody was invested in trying to get my money. <laughs> and now <laughs> insurance, know? insurance pays insurance for it all. Company. So oh, it's, yeah, little, insurance. it's become a whole, whole, whole thing. If anybody out there knows Jazz Jennings, she's a total 100%. You can see she was put on puberty blockers at like 10, eventually wanted to get her vagioplasty, right? And she couldn't do it because her penis didn't grow because they put her on puberty blockers. Your penis needs to grow in order to do the vagioplasty. So she had to use her colon. Oh my God. She had to use her colon in order to do that particular surgery. Oh and like, she's like, literally you can just watch her show and nine, it's like nine or 10 seasons now. It's so insane. And it, you know, you can just see the mental toll, all of it's taking on this young person. And it, it just saddens me. And I don't know why people aren't seeing this. You don't have to do that to a kid. You got to let a kid go through some turmoil like we're acting like oh my god it's gonna they're gonna kill themselves no they're not they're not gonna we don't have a high rate of suicide we have a high rate of suicidal ideation just like a lot of other communities do ideation is not suicide so that's <laughs> what the they way. keep saying is that that the kids will kill themselves that's not true they don't even well, show me if that was the case, we'd have a pile full of kids. We'd have a mountain full of dead kids and they're not, they're not killing themselves over. That's not true. Now they I do have imagine suicide. ideations, right? Yeah. Ideation is different than actually committing. A, a lot of people, I thought about it. A lot of people think about those things, not just trans yeah. people, you know, people who have eating disorders or just anxiety or depression or, you know, suicide is a thing. Most for teenagers. Sure. Teenage, young girls, they just did that study, I think I just saw where young girls now are just like totally out of it. Not trans, you know, girls are just out of it. They're depressed at a high rate. They're, you know, suicidal. We're not talking about that, are we? Only about trans kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's interesting because the, the way yeah. it's being phrased, and I have to say I yeah. haven't fully looked into it, so I, yeah. I'm a little yeah. bit ignorant on that. 
um, particular data point. I don't like but, that they sling around suicide like that. You know, it's a very, very horrible thing to think about yeah. suicide. I did it. And I actually did attempt suicide. So as 16, but that being said, you know, you got to understand the difference and to manipulate a, a parent like that and say, if you don't transition your child, they'll kill themselves is sick. It's actually sick and twisted that anybody in the medical world would ever do that to a parent and put a parent in his position. What, what do you think a parent's going to say? What would you say if you, they said to you right now, if you don't transition your child, what would you do? Yeah, I would, I would, I would want to help my child and think <laughs> that transitioning is, well, that's why I'm saying when they vilify the parents for this stuff, like, like the parents right. aren't the villains in this no, story. No, they're not. They're, they're being they're not. told these things and they're trying yep. to, to help their children. That's right. Thank and you. and like I said, like I don't know what I would do in that position. Like, None of us I, do. None of no. us. But for them to do that is disgusting. And that's our medical space. What about happen to do no harm? Like what's happening with even our doctors are like captured in this ideal. It's an ideological space. It has nothing to do with medicine. It has to do with something else to me, because why would you want to do that to kids? Like kids are so vulnerable. Kids don't know who they are. Come on, man. We've all been kids. Like I, I felt like a boy when I was a kid, but I, you know, I also want to stay here that I had a great childhood. I did not have a yeah. horrible childhood, an awesome childhood. And so that's not true that you can't live with your, and I was dysphoric, but I lived I felt with like a boy. Yeah, there felt, you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right I didn't feel like, I think growing up, I definitely felt more like a boy. I, even to this day, I would say, um, even though I'm pretty feminine, I mean, feminine yeah, you are. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I would say I'm pretty uh, feminine in many ways. There's yeah. a part of me that's, that's quite masculine. I, 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 I kind of feel in many ways, uh, that way. So it's not like, um, <laughs> it's funny because because I know that I come across not that way, but um... <laughs> <laughs> no. But I can see it. I can see. I I just can see that what you're what you're saying, and that's yeah. really an important thing to say because there are a lot of women who were grew up as tomboys who who you know whatever you were masculine or tomboy mm -hmm. whatever who literally grew out of it are married have kids love being with their husband you know are straight and none of that who always tell me I would have been transitioned today they all say that to me I would have been transitioned if I was a a kid today maybe yeah. you would have I mean it wasn't yeah I don't know I mean I wasn't at the time you know it wasn't something that I would have even been aware of right like uh, right it, that's my, right you know when I grew up nobody talked about that kind of stuff like yeah. I, I don't think I even was aware of trans people as as a child Probably like not. it just wasn't something right. that the people talked about but but uh but I certainly felt like you know I definitely dressed in that way yeah. um I certainly um liked to play with boys I played mm. boy games for the most part um you know I did I was gifted some Barbies but like you know <laughs> it's just I happened to have some toys but I also played with you know so yeah I liked it was just different. Like that's just how I was. And, and I definitely internalized, um, a more masculine kind of, you know, just because I like being around boys and it's just, yeah. it was just a different, I didn't, I had some female friends, but I related more in a different way. Right. Um, and then I grew up kind of being around men more. And, mm -hmm. and so it was just, it's just different, but like, but that's again, the thing I think we should, and this is where like, I, felt like we were going to this world where we were like, no labels, you shouldn't be able to ask, and you shouldn't like ask people if they're That's gay. Right. And now it's That's like, you're right. sticking these identity labels, That's like right. on job, you know, you're applying for a job and they ask you if you're gay, if you're trans, wow. like none of your business, like none I don't of your business. You. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not putting my pronouns. You know why I don't put my pronouns? I work hard to look like a dude. And if, if right. you're asking me I my pronouns, like it's insulting beyond belief. I'm like, what? So that's where, again, I got to show you the difference between a transsexual person who would never, never put their pronouns down because you're automatically wanting people just to see you as a man. And so I'm, you know, that's why I don't understand is he, it's a, it's a, it's not real. What's happening right now is not real. It's a trans space that is created 
be for for an identity space. It has nothing to do with what I did. And so that's what people need to understand. This isn't going to last forever. It's not. And it's why it's scary to me that young people are being pushed into this space. And if you notice, we have a huge, huge amount of detransitioners. These are the young people who are being put in this space and going, uh, no. And I'm like, well, that's why it's growing so fast, people. We have thousands of these young, mostly girls. Mm. You know that. Yeah. yeah. But so you said you don't think it's going to last forever, but no. what's kind of the what's the way out? Because right now it's like we're seeing kind of a war brewing here That's from right. the most part. That's so right. What's, what's well, what's going to happen is this. We're going to war out. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Well, <laughs> right on. <laughs> but no, honestly, what I think is going to happen is that we're going to start. We're starting to see uh, that this is not healthy and that kids are being put into this space. Peer pressure. There's a lot of peer pressure. You know, I, I talked to a lot of the detransitioners and why they went. And this was a lot of it was peer pressure for them. I think what we're going to see is that we need to stop this, this idea of self ID and that we have to stop people like our organizations like Planned Parenthood being able to, you can just walk in at 16 without your parents' consent and just say, I want hormones and you get them. It's all going to stop. That's the problem is it's too accessible to these young people. It should never be this accessible. You know how hard it was for me to get testosterone back in the day? Oh my God. I had a, I, I had a script and I would go to the pharmacy and they'd be like, we're not giving this to you. You're a woman. You don't need this. Like the pharmacist would tell me that kind of stuff. Today, you can go online to an, a thing and have a 15 minute intake on Skype. And, and get your hormones sent in a beautiful, nice box with a ribbon on it. I'm like, what? So to answer your question, I do think it's going to start to see that how insane this is and how on some level illegal it is. And um, it's going to start to come back. When we said that's why the detransitioners are so important in this message, because they're the ones being hurt. We can't have a bunch of young girls running around who are sterile and, and have no boobs and don't have an opportunity to grow into their womanhood where they should have been able to do that. Do you think that's, that's the keys like the detransitioners and those yep. messages reaching? That's right. Yeah. Yep. Hundred percent. It's why I support them. Why I'm with them. Why I believe that it's important for an older transsexual person like myself to show that I have no problem. The problem I have is my heart hurts for them. They don't in any way, shape, or form take anything away from my transition in, at all. I'm like, no, no, no. These kids are gold. We need to show that. How dare we do this to a young generation? Can you imagine how many of these young girls are going to be in the next ten years? Just. I mean, even the next five years, we're going to have massive amounts of these young girls who did things like cut their breasts off or even had hysterectomies. It's insane. That's kind of where I, I think the detransitioners is probably where I was informed, uh, mm -hmm. where I formed my opinion the most mm -hmm. as yeah, well. So I think you're, you're probably correct Yeah. because I mean, I didn't have any particular special interest in this area sure. Sure. and I just came across this and, and they don't have any vested interest except for sharing their own story and their experience. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And Thank you for saying that. that. You know, they get so much hate from the transgender community. And I'm like, wow, really, people? You are sick. Th th this, that's what I'm telling you. It's a false it's a false community. It's built on false values. It's built it's built on on complete total um, uh, this desire to to be something they're not. And I, we're doing such a disservice to a young generation of people saying it'll it'll change your whole life. You'll be so great. Uh, really? No. So when I when the community goes, those people are lying and they're just going against. All, no, they're not. They're not lying. It's their own personal experience. And if they were lying about yeah. it, then why would they be even having this? Why are we having this conversation? What, why is it so accessible to a 16 year old? I want to know why can a 16 year old go and have their breast cut off and have a hysterectomy and take hormones without any kind of psychotherapy? That's the question I keep asking. How is that possible? I mean, these are literally people who believed in it, thought that they were, you know, and then they had this experience. So there's no better like lived experience to go by. than That's that. right. It's so absurd. And they hide them. They hide them or they try to hide them because they don't want to admit what's happening is 
actually disgusting. And I want to admit it because I care about this community and I care about what it's done for me. And I care about future generations of transsexual people who need this. We need it. I wouldn't be here today if I didn't have what I have. And, you know, I'm not going to throw that. It saved my life. And, you know, they just all these tropes that they keep putting out there. It's not, I wouldn't be here. I just, I don't know where I just wouldn't be here. And that's why it's important that we have these conversations and show that well, there are people who need this. Exactly. And that's why I think it's important to have the conversation. And it's important for us to be like open and honest because yeah. there isn't this like either or kind of situation that's because, right. you know, there are people who are trans. There are people who that's need right. uh, the transitions. There are people who, who need to be seen and talked yeah. to and understood but also there are things that are going wrong in this and in, in, in what's happening. And I think we, we can't help them. Like, I think <sighs> if we can't have honest conversations, how are we going to help people? How That's are we right. going to have, find better solutions? That's right. And, you know, I think this kind of stifling of conversation is what's kind of caused a lot of this damage. Yep. And I think also it's very unhelpful to yell at people and be like, <laughs> you know, whether it's one side doing it or another side doing it. And um, it's it's all part of the same, you know, snake, basically. Yeah, And so I, I think we all need to be able to have these like kinds mm -hmm. of civil conversations and, you know, whatever people think that's it's weird cowardice or whatever and then I, I, do you know how many on definitely. right hardcore right wing shows i go on all of them because they ask me and i debate these people and most of the time i would say almost 99 percent of the time i walk away with as friends shaking my hand and saying thanks buck you know we really appreciate you coming on i'm like all your followers probably won't understand what i'm saying but at least i got to say it and the next thing you know i get all these comments from like hardcore christian like Dude, they're like, wow, thank you, Buck. I just, you know, you, you explained it to me. And I understand now what a transsexual person is and why you do need it. So I will take the opportunity if people will listen, right? Th it, just sit and listen. You might not want to hear it, but I guarantee you, if the things that you hate, listen to, because you will learn something from that. Why do you hate it? Why do you hate this kind of person? And then you can start to understand, well, maybe I'm getting a, a message from someone that's telling me something different. The trans activists are ruining it for all of us. They're not a representation yeah. of this community. They're a representation of some crazy fascist movement that wants to take over everything. And, you know, I, I do blame academia on some level as well. You know, it's gotten into that university system. And so many of the young trans kids are coming from these university spaces as well. Yeah. And I think a lot of times people don't understand, get kind of, they don't even really understand why they don't like something. They, don't. they just have these irrational kind of thoughts that are never That's really right. considered. And when you really kind of nail down, it's like, That's oh, right. I don't really know. And sometimes if you can get them to slow down their thoughts and emotions and reconsider, sometimes you can get through that. Yeah. And I've noticed even like when I first discovered uh, Blair White, mm -hmm. Uh, I was reading the comments and there were a lot of comments where they're like, you know, I thought I hated <laughs> trans people, <laughs> but you made me kind of rethink that because now I see that there is like rational people. And actually what I hated were these like, activists. that's right. Yeah. That's right. So I that's think right. there's a lot to putting and that's why it's important to have different voices. And I think I've heard you say, basically, you know, I, I speak for myself, you know, and I think that's there's right. too many people who say, oh, no, I speak. I speak for, and, you know, they just take this like I speak for everyone, you know. No, they and do. There's trans people in the community who are like, oh, I read that JK thing. You don't need to read it. I'm like, what? You're actually telling people not to read it, that you read it and you're the authority. Wow. That right. so that says to me right there, that's what they're doing. They're training these kids kids to not do their due diligence and to not look at all sides that that the leader of the trans community these people they know what's going on and i'll just follow you know kids are very easy to manipulate and very easy to sort of get on board of things without without doing that thought process and just making them excited to be trans and giving them That's... flags and buttons and all kinds of shit well not just kids though i have to say but yeah it's yeah. um You're adults right. are just i mean sometimes yeah. kids are better at questioning things i i taught high school for a little while oh wow and i was really like 
I loved my like the kids Aww. were just so good at questioning things like they Excellent. were better than the adults they were like I love that they, they would question me I'm like I encourage that I'm like yes question me. thank you, you. Should question me that's what yes. you need to teach kids is like that's question right. people question authority figures question everybody oh my God, people, but they're not people, but question but but but, no. but that when I say kids, remember how old I am. So I mean, I'm talking about twenty something <laughs> right. year olds. Hey, and, listen, and I also don't. taught university, and I, call, I called my <laughs> students kids, and some of them were older than me at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think we've lost it even in the universe. I used to speak at all the universities all over the world, and now all of a sudden in America, I can't speak there because I'm a transphobe. So I'm like, oh, what? I'm trans. <laughs> you're a trans transphobe. That's really a whole new level. Of and that's the thing. You're right. I mean, academia, where you're supposed to be able to explore ideas and thoughts, and there you are. You're like, no, nope. you can't. You, you can't. can't. Like, this is the last. Like, this is the worst place to explore anything. That's it's right. like it's. This is why, like, I've become more outspoken. Is because, mm. you know. Uh, I hate to say my side, my side. Um, <laughs> it's just like, it's just become so like, you know, I, it's funny because like the val free speech was a thing mm -hmm. that was very important in questioning mm -hmm. things. And, and it's like, suddenly it's like, you couldn't, maybe it wasn't mm -hmm. so sudden, but it felt all of a sudden. Yeah. It's like, you couldn't do that. And there's like this unspoken rule is like, you can't question things. You can't talk about certain That's things. Right. You can only have this one opinion. And if you didn't have this opinion that you shared, well, you're on the outs, you're a bad person. And it's like, I think, I think it was important to represent that like, People like me, you know, uh -huh. could speak. Right. And I know that I'm not a minority. I know That's that right. I'm not. That's I right. just know that I'm a minority in speaking. But I know Which that a lot of people share my thoughts. Yeah. They do. A lot of people share my thoughts and they're always like, oh, I can't do it. But please, you know, I believe me, I'm I'm very aware of the space I'm in and that I am able to say things that not very many people could say in this particular fight. I, I do understand that and I don't take it for granted, uh, but it does also hurt me when I have a community of people I fought for for many years come after me because I'm not, you know, the right trans person or I just, you know, it's not just the trans thing. It's a lot of stuff. We're not allowed to say things. We're not allowed to question. I'm like, I lived in Mexico for 10 years and I've traveled the world and I've been in places where you can't say things. You'll get killed. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm like, what are you people doing? This is the, you know, fabric of our country. We're supposed to be able to say things that might hurt your feelings. Sorry, but and now we're not even allowed to sort of even on accident misgender somebody like what? Like it, it's, it's a bizarre and to me, it's very anti-American on some level where we're. It where is. We're and it's, it's anti-freedom, you know, yeah. ultimately yeah. it's anti-freedom. Yeah. It's anti-liberal, yeah. you know, liberal. Totally. Yeah. I'm a liberal. I'm a 100% a liberal thinker. I'm a free thinker. I believe in, you know, the government not telling me how to be, I believe in certain things and being able to say and walk and dress and be how you need to be. But this new sort of kind of the, which what they call the left space doesn't seem to resonate with me. And that scares me because I've always been a very liberal person. It's almost like a puritanism that's yeah. rising yeah. from, it's yeah. funny because it's both on the left and the right. It's that's just, right. It just manifests itself a little differently, Yep. but it's yep. the same and it's kind of authoritarianism, very. you know? Very. And it's and it is it is scary and it's weird how it's crept into so many Ugh. topics of conversation, yeah. and that's what really I think um, bothers me. And I think that's where it's like, okay, that's my line. I think that's yeah. where where I was finally is like, okay, that is that yeah. is my line in the sand, which I didn't, yeah. you know, I'm not a particularly brave person or anything like that. Um, well, yeah, you are. Today, you would be considered brave because you're having conversation with people like me and Colin and you know what I mean? And you're stepping outside of that, which I'm going to say is awesome because what you do that, it encourages other people to do that. So I just want to say that. Thank you. Because it is, and especially because you're a journalist, it is very important that you do it as well. Because I do think on some level, even journalism I see has taken a weird turn, not for the better. Turn. 
<laughs> well, that's why, but that's, you know, honestly, that's why I felt um, a sense of responsibility to do it because I think it makes, um, I hope it makes a bigger difference. It does. When I, somebody like me does it, who is not, you know, conventionally would normally do it. Like, you know. Um, but that says a lot. It. You know that? It says a lot because what you just said, you're not conventionally do it, that you are doing it, then that people see that. You know, people are scared. You you know that, right? People are, are scared to death to do I know it. that because I'm scared to death. <laughs> yeah, but not scared to death enough to mm, yeah. to to put yourself in a space that you could lose whatever you could lose, right? And and yeah. same for me. And so I think once I got punched in the face, the first time I got punched in the face by stepping out over and out of bounds on some level, it hurt, but then I realized, okay, I see this is, I'm going to have to take some punches in order to get, you know, through into that next level. You got to take the punches in order, to, but I'll tell you, I would do it again and I would do it again and I would do it again because I do feel like very much that I'm doing the right thing and no way do I feel like I'm do. So I just want to, again, encourage you to, to do what you're doing because it is very powerful on so many levels. That's a muscle. And I hope I hope it's a ripple and, a, and it's a muscle. So I think a ripple in the sense that I hope it encourages others to yes. be able to, in yes. whatever small way they can speak. That's right. And second, um, a muscle in the way that it builds over time. So you feel like, you know, the first time you speak, it's like, <laughs> oh, it's really uncomfortable. It's sore. It yeah. hurts. You stress about it. And then it's like, oh, okay, it's a little easier. It's a little yeah. easier. And then you get to the point that you have conversations like this one and you feel like, yeah. Okay, I'm not going to obsess about it for days after or weeks after, right? That's right. Whereas That's right. I think, you know, if you talked to me a year and a half ago, maybe that would have been a little bit different. Oh, I, you know, I, I actually uh, came around and started to support J.K. Rowling, though I didn't early on. I, I did from afar. I was too scared. I saw the insanity and then it just clicked to me. I'm like, what am I doing? This is not who I am. This is not my integrity. It's not how I run my life. I've always been an, a very outspoken person. And so I'm like, wait a minute here. I'm actually doing what they want me to do, which is to shut up. And the minute I, that was my first punch in my face when I went and I po posted, JK is not transphobic. Oh my God. Oh, the whole community came after me like pitchforks and, you know, the fire and all that. And then I realized, no, I'm doing the right thing. And, and I, today, to this day, you know, I feel like I did the right thing and that, you know, that woman got a, it's a basically a witch hunt as far as I'm concerned, because she did not. I'll sit here and tell you that as a transsexual person, she did not say anything transphobic. She said what she needed to say as a woman. And so now all of a sudden women can't speak up for themselves. No, it doesn't work that way at all. And I think one thing that's important is to kind of. I think it gives you a lot more confidence to speak if you know what you're, uh, that you're have more certainty. That's so right. knowing, so for example, JK Rowling, like I, I haven't necessarily done my whole mm -hmm. homework or research about it. So I haven't mm -hmm. spoken too much about her, but right. like, but if I did and I knew and I was sure in my facts mm -hmm. and, you know, and in my view, then it's like, I'd feel more comfortable about it. That's and right. so I think when you're more sure, that certainty that you're right and sort of the no, more totally. principle of it guides you. A hundred percent. And I went and read it. I read the whole thing and I was like, what? Wait a minute here. This isn't. And I just felt a responsibility as a transsexual person that this can't be right. This woman did not do anything bad. And this woman has given a lot in this world. She's a hugely giving person. And I just felt like I can't be part of this. I don't want to be lumped, even if I'm not, because I felt like if I don't say something, then people automatically assume I'm right. I'm on the side right. of the trans turfy crap when I'm not I'm not on I'm not on the side of name calling I'll tell you that right I'm on the side of, of having conversation and having opinions yeah. but I'm not on the side I don't, I'm not at fucking 12 and living in, in a sandbox like are you insane calling people turfs and bigot and like where what is that? when when <laughs> what good does that do ever nothing zero Zero. I also found like her, like the people who were in her movies, like the fact that they publicly went and like 
gross. If anything, they shouldn't have said, you know, anything or they could have That's said, right. spoken up for trans rights or something like that. But they didn't need to, like, go they and... They didn't. That was, like, I kind of lost respect for them. Me regardless too. of anything she said. Like, yep. it doesn't even yep. matter. No, nope, it yeah. doesn't matter. And honestly, it doesn't even matter what she said. I think they just picked her out for some reason and just made her the sort of scapegoat, to be honest with you. So it, Well, it made them... I think they felt like if they didn't say something, mm-hmm. it just like made them look a certain way. And so it's, yeah. it's a way of making themselves yeah. sort of the, you know, okay and supportive and the heroes. And, but that's a disgusting thing. Like gross. There's even people that I have in my life that I lately have been very unhappy with and don't align with and yep, don't like their too. opinions. And yep. people constantly ask me to like uh, renounce them. And I won't <laughs> do that because that's a shitty thing to do. That's like, right. You know? <laughs> yeah, I agree. No, totally. There's people in my life that I don't necessarily agree with. It's fine. Like, dude, we don't have to have the conversation. Let's talk about something else. Like, I'm not I'm not going to just disown you. I mean, if you're doing insane stuff on the internet, I will not be part of that. And I will. Can, and I have lost some friends because of it. You know, them blaming me. They literally, like, post these are my friends and they'll post well buck it's your fault that this is happening because you're aligning yourself with the right i'm like i don't align with the right what are you talking about like but you know they do stuff like that and i'm like that is so like not where i come from you know i come from a space you got a problem with me dude let's have it let's talk about it let's figure out why that's where i come from and this new idea that you could just blast somebody on the internet without having yeah. a conversation is weird. I've got I've got some of those in my life too, but not Ugly. maybe not for that much longer. But but there is people who are just like oh, I don't know. I don't, I'm just so in disalignment with how they're behaving now that I'm yeah. like I don't know if I want to keep them. Yeah. But I'm not gonna go and publicly denounce them anyway. That's like gross. I might not be friends, but I'm not gonna different. Like, yeah, that's different. Totally different. But I think. You know, I'm definitely hoping for, um, you know, some changes, a better future. I think I'm seeing some moves, but I'm also seeing some pendulum swinging and and some negative yeah. things as well. And it it is yeah. worrying me. But um, yeah. but I think conversations such as ours, I hope there's more of that. And I hope there's I think the, you know, the center. The center cannot hold, you know, I, I hope there is more of the sort of the center. When I say center, by the way. I think people kind of tend to think of center as, um, you know, middle, the middle, right? Oh, like right. Political sure. middle. And I don't sure. actually think of it that way. I think mm. of it because you can be like, you can have political views that are, mm. you know, progressive. Left, it's more about wanting to find a way to get along, you know, wanting to find a way, common right. ground, way forward, right. like being reasonable. Like that's what yeah. it's about for me when I think of center. Mm-hmm. And so I'm hoping that that grows and that that group of people feels more empowered. Yeah. But, you know, what is it that, you know, just kind of as a as we sign off, like, mm-hmm. what do you wish people kind of understood about trans people? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you. I, I think most importantly that we're not all the same. And just like every group of people, you know, we come to it from different backgrounds, different, you know, places, different reasons why many of us choose to do this. And to listen to one voice or just the loudest does not mean you are actually listening to trans people. I I really want people out there to sort of understand the narrative that's coming from the transgender space is not the narrative that really reflects actual real trans people. It doesn't. It reflects a new movement. And I'm not a movement, nor am I an agenda, nor am I an ideology. I have a mental disorder that I fixed. And now I'm able to be participating in the world by creating my own businesses. You know, I have a family. I'm just, if you saw me down the street, you would just think, oh, that dude, you know? So I, that's what I want people to see that we do this not to be on the internet talking about our transitions. We do this because we have to, we have no other choice. We've tried other ways of living and it doesn't work for us. And that what you see on the internet is not a reflection of what people who truly have gender dysphoria have, because we would never be doing what we see out there. We would be doing what we want to do, which is to live as men and women and move through the world. So that's all I just, I think it scares me that those are the people that are representing me. 
And um, when you give me the opportunity to speak here, I think it helps my sort of space be seen as much more diverse than the community is giving us the opportunity to sort of be on some level. So if that makes sense. It makes absolute sense. <laughs> well, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, you so, so Thank much. You. I really appreciate having you on, Buck. You're awesome. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you. You're awesome. <laughs>